Okay, people, welcome back to another play day. It's my favorite day. I've been pushing this off because I thought I didn't have enough to show. And the other day I passed the shelf and I looked up and went, oh, well, dang, there's more than I thought. There's a few things that were sent to me. There's a few things that I bought. There's a few paint jobs that I've done. And then something I bought at the store. <laughs> and if you see something you like, all the links are in the description to the artists, to the base bodies, to the paints. I'm going to try to get everything down there that you could possibly ask about. That way, if you, well, what kind of paint is that? Click in the description. Where'd you get that head sculpt? Click in the description. What is the meaning to life? That's not in the description. We're all still working that out. Let's start with something that I bought at the store. This is the Ashland Halloween Dragon Skeleton. Yes, I, I was reading that, <laughs> the, the tag that was on it. I picked this up at Michael's today because look at it. It's a crazy dragon skeleton. Oh, that wing is a little loose at the joint. Terrible articulation. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> That's really the only points of articulation, except the jaw. It can open and close. It is warped in places. The front legs have kind of balanced out to where they sit on the ground, but the back two are bent crooked. And maybe I can heat that up, straighten it out a little bit, but it's a $15 decoration that just happens to look badass. It could also be a neat project. Paint it up, do some shading, some washes, and make it even more realistic. I mean, even more real, you know, the realistic dragon skeleton. You know what I mean, though. Here it is next to Loose Collector's Lady Death, which is about Marvel Legends scale. And the dragon's not huge. It's more like a, a faithful pet or something. So faithful that it comes back from the dead to hang out with whoever I'm going to display this with. Oh, I'll find a use for it, mother Like I said, it's $15 or $16.99 with 30% off because Michael's always runs 30% off. But on their website, it's 11 and some change. And I ask, they don't price match in store with their online store for whatever reason. Next up, something a lot of people have done, but now it's my turn. Mostly because I never opened this figure. It stayed in the package, ended up in a stack in the house, and today I was looking for something else. What? Why have I never opened this? Now, I never had a problem with the blue mask and the ties swinging off. In fact, in the comics, a lot of the time, it had some blue to it, but I think it was mostly highlights. Because when they'd put the blue up here, it'd also be in the black parts of the costume. There's no blue parts in this costume, so I went and painted all this black, and man, does it look sweet. This Vallejo model color black just goes on smooth. I love painting with it. On top of that, I gave it a shot of Mr. Hobby, Mr. Super Clear Matte and that just finishes it off. It makes the black match with the rest of the body and it knocks down the plastic shine. It gives it a slightly more premium feel. It ties everything together, or at least I feel like it does. I also sealed it before putting the paint on. That way it would have a little tooth, something for the paint to grab onto. It helps with coverage. I mean, it is black, so it's not troublesome, but every little bit helps. Essentially, I spray this before, during, and after between every major coat. If I do some intricate paint work, psh, I'm sealing it in. That way, if I come back with something else and mess up, I, it's easier, well, okay, you can wipe off anything, but it's easier to clean up. Here's a simple head swap I did a few weeks ago that I showed during my Mofex Bane review. And this is the Mafex Nightfall Batman body with the McFarlane Toys DC Retro New Adventures of Batman head. I say simple swap, but it's kind of an expensive swap. Metacom ain't cheap. But I had to do this after swapping the DC Retro Joker head onto the Mafex Hush Joker body. The head sizes between the two characters does not work at all. Look how much bigger Joker's head is than Batman's. But as figures standing on the shelf, uh, uh, this works. Batman still ends up a little taller. There is nothing wrong with the original Mafex Batman head. In fact, it looks pretty good. There's Batman. But I love the shadow and I love the nostalgia factor that this adds. The blues match up too close. Okay, this may be slightly lighter than this, but at a distance, at regular distance, because you're not going to be, you wanted to see me, Commissioner. You're going to look at it like this. And there, it looks fine. In fact, look how tight it is down around the neck while retaining all this tilt, some up. Mm, down is where the chin hits, but look. It's not super accurate to the cartoon. It's almost a modernization of those designs, but hmm. 
yeah, I, I like it. And that's what it boils down to. If you like it, then do it. Put it on your shelf. Enjoy it, because that's what I'm gonna do. Is it silly? Did I ruin the Mafex? Not to me. I enhanced it. I improved it. I made it more to my liking. And that's all I care about. Like, why in the hell would anybody paint a Marvel Legends spiral mustard yellow? Because crazy enough, it's accurate to some appearances. I stumbled into an extra spiral a few weeks ago, so I hit Google thinking I can customize this somehow. And that's where I ran across long suppressed Freedom Force images. I didn't remember that at all, but there she was in yellow. And oddly enough, just last night, I was sorting through the Marvel Trading Card Series 1 for the next reading Robo, and right there on the Freedom Force card is Yellow Spiral. Fairly simple, I popped the arms out so I could spray the body. For that, I used Tamiya Color Camel Yellow. Then for the gold arm and bands, I used this Let's Resin Chrome Marker. That came out fantastic. It's not mirror finish, but it's damn shiny and smooth. I thought with it being a pin, it would drag through and leave scuff marks and everything, but no, it just whoo, leveled out. I probably should have primed it or paid more attention to where I was spraying because I didn't get here and then here. I didn't spray, uh, yeah, and right here, it, it just light in spots, but it's such an ugly color anyway that that almost works in its favor as kind of a shading tactic, or at least that's what I'm calling it. Excuses! But not priming made the white more yellow than this. And the same thing happened to these little gems on the chest. So it, it was a happy accident. It's spiral in yellow and gold. What more do you want? Hasbro, you're burning through the Brotherhood and Freedom Force, and you have the spiral mold that can't be used for anything else. <laughs> I don't know how many people would want this color scheme, but it's there. And since Freedom Force slash Brotherhood was on my mind, I thought it's about time I upgraded Avalanche. I got this head on eBay from Collectible Carnage, and I like this so much better. Like I said in the review, this is accurate to a few of Avalanche's appearances, but this is more my mind's eye. This is more what I have in my brain. I wasn't able to replicate the swirly twirly here. I just used some silver paint, but it's close enough, I feel like. And this is like flexible material? It's gotta be, or he wouldn't be able to turn. Same with this material and this material. So why wouldn't this be like real metal or something? Again, with the excuses, this is my excuse jig. Because I could have taken this paint and put it here and here and here and here and here and here and everything would have matched, but I didn't wanna. Sometimes you just wanna lazy customize, you know? I, I, it's like everything I do lately doesn't have eyeballs because I've been kind of nervous about getting into the water slides again and I haven't wanted to. Something else I did though is drop the belt down. You can see where it's supposed to be. That peg is supposed to go in that peg hole. I brought it way down. I feel like that balances the figure out a bit. Stock, it's a shorter torso look with long, long legs. You get the belt down slightly, it kind of brings the wrists into position. It gives them more upper body, less lower body. I like it. Again, <laughs> that's what it boils down to. If I like it, I'm doing it. And like I said earlier, as always, I hit it with some Mr. Super Clear Matte, and again, it knocked down the plastic shine on the blue parts while leaving a little bit of sheen on the silvers. Now, when I put this in with the group, I'll look at the others and go, well, I need to shoot them with some dull coat. I've said it before on many a play day. If I had unlimited money, I'd have cases of this and just shooting every figure as I open it up. Is that annoying? A more involved custom is the squid kit from Scoundrel Stock. I needed a squid head in my display, or Tessic if you're nasty. What enticed me most about this custom is that it's basically just the wandering Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi from Obi-Wan. That's the arms, the body, and the legs under the robe. You just take off the Obi-Wan head, snip the neck peg, pop the arms so you can remove the shirt, and then dremel the forearms enough to get these bracers to fit on. Then it's just figuring out the soft goods, which is not my specialty at all. Slip the girdle on, put the upper part of the body on, pop the arms back in, and then 
you're good. Well, okay, I painted everything before putting it together. That way I wouldn't have to worry about slop going onto the sleeves or up on the torso. And look, didn't have to paint eyeballs. <laughs> I'm super happy with the paint job, but I wish it was a bit browner. It's not quite accurate, but at the same time, I like how it looks. So. I don't know, I, I may go back and redo it, I may not. For the soft goods, the cape is an extra Rebel 10 Customs Jedi cloak I had. For this, I just picked up a little material at Walmart that is about this color and then threw some paint at it. The, the same paint I used up here on the torso. <laughs> Maybe I will go back and paint it because the more I look at it, especially under these bright lights, which it may be what's throwing me off. When it was on the shelf in the other room, it was kind of darker. See, but you get it up here and it's very fleshy. I don't know. We'll see what happens between now and the next play day. Here's something I picked up at the PO box just today, the wall. This comes from Foral. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's F-O-R-A-L. I've been watching your Play Day videos for a while and have noticed a lack of interesting characters, so I asked my friend to 3D print a six inch scale the wall. I hate to bring this up because it makes it sound that I'm unappreciative of getting this, but I do have a wall figure that I got from Loose Collector years ago. That may have been an early, early Play Day, but this is a different style, almost a modern take on it. It's a different sculpt and because it was done by somebody, it's a different paint job too so the face up here it looks different and the legs more action oriented well as action oriented as a wall can be i have no complaints about getting another one of these it's the wall and i i love it unfortunately there's no socials listed in here and it says not so new customizer i i take that as there's previous customs so if you see this, uh, let me know down in the comments and uh, I'll get that linked. Next up, I finally got my hands on a Foosh skeleton, so I have a place for this head after several years. Plastic Goodies on Instagram, who actually sculpted the figure itself, made this head for me a while back. And I'm talking a while back. I think before the skeletons were even produced. This has been on my shelf for a while, just waiting and waiting and waiting, and now... I can display it properly. Taking a look at the skeleton, it is nicely articulated, especially the waist coming down and good grief. I can't do that in real life. Kick up and then the knee and then the foot back and forth. Yeah, this is pretty neat. I need to get that robo display together because this would fit right in with that. It looks so good. It throws me off when I think about the amount of customs I have of myself that people have sent me. I, I, never in a million years would I have ever guessed that that would be a thing, but <laughs> it's right here. It hits me right here every time. Next up, a mainstay in the play days has always been Casting Cave, and I finally have a body for this head. Me and Veeve split the two-pack. I got Thor, he got Destroyer, and I got it specifically for this. Now, I'm not sure of the accuracy here, if he's supposed to have these wings or the beard with these armored-looking legs. I just know that the head that came with it had a beard, and, well, I guess the wings are different. But you know what? I don't care. Look at that. That's icing on the cake. I don't know what happened to the hammer. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to go looking through the box that I brought back from Veeb's house a couple weeks ago. But also from Casting Cave is a new Hellboy head for the Mezco 112th Collective newer movie Hellboy. I haven't seen the David Harbour Hellboy movie. I've seen some clips. It's okay, it seems like, but... I haven't had the urge to watch the whole thing. But I got the Mezco figure when it released because I thought, you know what? I don't have a Hellboy figure. My wife is the Hellboy collector and she has all the previous figures. But she's a Ron Perlman gal. So she hasn't had the urge to watch the Harbor movie either. So after all these years, I have an excuse to break it out because of this comic inspired head. And I feel like it changes the whole look. Uh, yeah, it may be slightly small, but so are the legs, which is a Hellboy trait when you think about it. Maybe I'm making excuse my excuse. But I like this more than this, simply because I'm more familiar with this and this makes it more unique. And I love adding unique stuff to the shelf. I think my favorite thing is the eyes though. Look at them just peering out. I actually haven't messed with this figure much yet. I do know that the ankles don't like to go forward. 
So there's a constant kind of lean back. You got to fight that with this figure. Bendy wire in the tail though. The smaller right hand compared to a lot of other figures. Yeah, I, I really, really, really like this. The Mezco elbows don't go past 90, seems like. And then, well, the legs been passed. This is my Hellboy. That's cool. Or maybe I'm easy to please. Dang it having fun with my toys. And then finally, here's a new head for my Captain America from Alex Klein. You know Alex Klein. Yes, you do. If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2, you know who Alex Klein is. You suck, Zylac. Typical. He was Zylac. I met Alex at San Diego Comic-Con last year where he had a bag of 3D prints of sculpts that he did and I, I had to grab a few of them. Savage Dragon's on my list for sure. I, well, these all are, but again, eyeballs. I haven't wanted to do them. This year he messaged about meeting up somewhere at the show because he had something for me and this was it. What I just say earlier about Batman and the shadowing on the forehead, I love that kind of thing and to have a Captain America with that? <laughs> Come on now. I've been jealous of people who collect Marvel Select because their Captain America had that. Man, putting this on the 20th anniversary Captain America body, it just works. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this. It's a very stoic Captain America, but Alex shrunk the head slightly, which makes the body feel more heroic. It gives it those proportions, that Captain America look. Paint job's fantastic. The shadow on the cowl works with the shading that Hasbro did on the scale mail and down here on the abs. It just fits. Completely. <laughs> this is my Captain America. Plus he gave me this smiling Captain America head that I may make a run at sometime soon. It's just a great sculpt. I feel like it captures the smile correctly, which we don't always see. Sometimes the mouth is smiling, but the cheeks aren't, or the eyes aren't. This feels like a, a full-on smile. It feels very natural. But if I do get it painted, you know I'm adding that shadow. Ooh. I'm gonna show a few of these work in progress figures, hoping that it'll motivate me to get them finished, but that hasn't been the case in the past so far. I show a work in progress and it kind of goes into a box or into the pile, but I will eventually get to them just like this Naaster head sculpt from DP Toy Sculpts. I showed this back when I finished my Sa'im custom and I finally decided that yes, I am gonna use the NECA Gargoyles Goliath body. This head just has that size, so it needs that mass under it. But Naaster's always had two color schemes and I'm torn on which one to do. So I started a second Naaster on a smaller body with a different head from Big Head Studios. Because why not? I hadn't finished the first one, why not start a second one? Because that's a lot of the fun, is seeing some custom fodder or somebody's head sculpt online and going, well shit, I need to start that. I need to do that right now. Now I'm trying to decide which one's red and which one's green. Did I just decide? I'm just, mm, I, I, I don't know. Because at this point, it's just prime spray and shade and then knock in the little details like the teeth and the eyes. But again, no pupils in these eyeballs. Oh, da, 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 da. Same goes for this death bird that I'm kind of piecing together at the moment. The head sculpt's from Anthanatos Unlimited on Etsy, and if you go to order this, know that there is two sizes. There's a large and the small. Now the size difference isn't huge, but the bigger one will look odd on the Age of Apocalypse kitty body. The smaller one looks great on that body though. Now it's kind of hard to tell because of all that hair. Your first thought is that head is huge, but look at it just face wise like this. And there you go. That looks pretty good. This is gonna be a mishmash. I'm kind of going with my own design because Deathbird's costume's been all over the place. This is from the two-pack Lady Mandarin who I was originally gonna use for this character because look at that awesome banding and the design work on there and the armor look. But this figure is absolutely huge and that does not work with Lylandra. This, on the other hand, is about the same height. I'm not completely sold on this cape. I can paint this kind of feather-like and then actually use this color stock, but she needs wings, I think. That's where the old five inch figure may come in handy because I may steal those just for the throwback factor. Like attach these back here or something and then use the collar around the neck somehow. Hell, I'm even considering stealing these gauntlets and making them fit on these forearms. Then I've got this anodized wire for the crazy cables going all over the place. But I don't know, this is the one that's making its way across the customizing table the fastest. 
but I may have just jinxed myself because, hey, look at this. That's progress. Mm -hmm. Shiny, look at that. And yes, I went to eBay and bought the five inch death bird. KB Toys, three for $10. <laughs> So at the end of the day, anytime you get to play, that is a good day. I tried to change it up slightly so it wouldn't be day, day, play, day, day, play, 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 day, day. But there you go. We looked at some customs. We looked at some paint jobs. We had a good old time. Again, if you're interested in sprucing up your own figures with some 3D sculpts, some prints, some paint jobs, then... Look in the description. That's as far as you have to go. Hopefully I'll get some customs done so we can do another play day sooner rather than later. But you know how it is, it comes in waves, it comes in cycles. Sometimes I am just on fire. I, yeah, okay, I gotta get this done, get this done here, put this together, piece, piece, dremel, 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 spray paint. And then sometimes I just wanna sit at the computer and watch YouTube. But I look at that as kind of recharging batteries, getting ideas, building up that motivation or maybe that's just one last excuse for this episode so i can do this again <laughs> it's